You're listening to At Home with Allison, your local expert on real estate, business, and community. It's WQEE 99.1 FM. Welcome. This is the At Home with Allison show. I'm Allison Waters, realtor and local native to Coweta County. I, uh, let's see, I think this is week seven. I can't really keep up anymore. Um, it's, it's just been getting better and better here. I want to do something a little bit different today and give you guys a market Monday update. So, um, we're getting into the time of the year, as we talked about in our March Madness episode with Ashley McKenzie, that we're in this part of the year where things are supposed to typically start getting busier. And we're seeing, uh, you know, between March and September typically being the bulk of the year where the market is hot and things are booming. And obviously, this is a year that everyone's kind of been anticipating. Is this the year that everything's going to crash? Uh, is this going to be more affordable? Affordable for me to move into being a home buyer now. And uh, so I just want to talk about a lot of statistics from charts and data uh, through our Georgia listing service. We'll be talking about some predictions um, and just kind of look at what we've got going and kind of try to understand what's going on in the market now and what we can expect to come in the future. So uh, I'm going to go over some period reports right now. We're going to look at the last quarter of the year for 2022 versus the first quarter of this year um, and kind of see where we're at as far as that goes. So let's go ahead and start with Coweta County uh, because that's where we're based. We're going to go through Coweta, Spalding, Pike, Fayette, Troop, Carroll, Heard, and Meriwether counties for this. So um, stay tuned and listen out for your county to get the uh, most relevant information for yourself. But they should all have some similar trend going on. Um, but of course, as we know, the market is different in different areas. And that's why we want to look at this so that we can get a good range uh, from all different types of areas. So Coweta County, we are seeing right now, now let, let's touch base on this a little bit. So typically October to De- you know the end of December is typically a slower period of the year. And the first part of the year, January to the end of March, which is kind of what we're getting na- now, is also a slower time of the year. But typically, it's a little bit more booming than that last quarter of uh of the previous year. So obviously this last year in general the or the last 6 months these two quarters that we're looking at have been historically low for lots of things and high for other things. So we're going to look at that. Um so we have 645 houses listed in Coweta County in that last quarter of the year last year. So far we've seen 601. We're down 6.8% in the number of properties listed in our area, but of course March is not finished, so it very well, um, you know, could break a little even. That is something that's a, you know, a, a little, little strange. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to look at the last year versus the last twenty-four months as well, and that'll give us a little bit more insight. But we're down thirty-seven percent on properties sold, so we are up on active listings currently, but we're down on the numbers that have actually sold. Um, we are up on the average sales price though by seven point six percent. The last quarter of the year, twenty twenty-two, was four hundred and forty-two thousand. And now we're at 475,000 uh, average and uh, our solds are looking pretty good as well. Um, we are up 13% as far as the uh, sold price of the home sold. So it seems like we're seeing higher um, home values, higher sold values. Uh, and more listings in the higher price range as well, which is really interesting. Uh, But we are down um, overall uh, for the average sold price uh, versus list price ratio, 64%. So that means that our sellers are still putting houses up, what they think that uh, it's worth based on maybe the last two years of value, uh, but they're having to reduce those prices pretty significantly um, overall to kind of get in more of the realistic, correct, market price range. So down 64% sales price versus list price, which is actually really crazy. 
see. So for Coweta overall, you know, we're down in the number of uh, properties sold, a little bit down in the number of properties listed, um, but we're up on that sales price and the um, sold price and list price of those homes. So pretty interesting there. Going to take a look next at Fayette County. Fayette County actually is down even more than uh, Coweta. They're down 16% in the number of properties listed uh, and down in comparison to Coweta as well. So in that last quarter of the year in Fayette, we saw 473 homes sold. The first quarter of the year so far, we've only seen 393 sold. So it looks like the beginning of the year is a little bit slow for Fayette. Um, it is also down in the list price um, as well, or the average list price. So the average there is five hundred and fifty nine thousand versus Coweta was four hundred and seventy five thousand. So a little bit of a difference there. Um, we are seeing the sold prices have also gone down. So list price and sold prices down really heavy in Fayette. We're seeing a sixty three point eight percent decrease. So at the uh, second quarter or the last quarter of twenty twenty two, the uh, sold price was uh, high of four million now uh, this first quarter of the year the highest sold price that we've seen is 1.4 million uh, but overall it's only gone down on average about three percent the average was 513 thousand on that last quarter of 2022 and we're pushing uh, almost to 500 thousand in uh, 2023 so um, average days on markets have also gone up as well for both of these um, for Coweta last quarter of the year it was 20 six days on market average. Now we're looking at 39. And for Faya, it was, was 27, but now it's 35 days on market. So houses are sitting a little longer. Um, in Coweta, we're seeing some higher price ranges as far as the list price and the sold price. And then um, our average sales price versus list price ratio is actually break even. So you're getting your house in Fayette County a lot closer to and around that list price versus in Coweta. It seems that there's been a lot more of a reduction needed there to make things happen. So Coweta was a really inflated area for the last couple years. Years, um, and we are kind of seeing that level out. Looking at Heard County, that last quarter of the year for 2022, they had 20 properties listed. Now for this first quarter, we're at 17. Again, we do have a uh, another about week and a half roughly of March left. Um, so that very well could balance out as well as the number of properties sold, which is down by 44%. So what we're seeing over all of these comparison charts essentially is that um, properties are coming on the market, but they're sitting long and they're not sitting longer and not going under contract uh, as quickly. So I think that a lot of that comes from hesitancy from buyers not wanting to purchase at the moment because of interest rates and other things. So we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. Um, finishing up with Heard County, the average uh, sold price versus list price is down 6.9%, meaning that they've had to bring um, some things down a little bit to match the market. And the average days on market in Heard County is up 76%. It was a 25 average days on market for that last quarter of 2022 and 44 days on market for this first quarter. So things are sitting longer, guys. That's what we're seeing going into Carroll County. They are up on properties listed, actually. So uh, 435 listed in that last quarter of 2022, and they're now at 481, and we're not even finished with March yet. So that's a huge 10% uh, increase there, but the number of properties sold has gone down 20%. So although there's a huge influx of listed properties in Carroll County, we're not seeing that reflected in things going under contract. Um, average original list price of solds is um, the average 328000 for now and 326000 in that last quarter of 22. So very similar as far as the list price there. And the sold prices have actually gone down a little bit. The average last quarter of 2022 was 302000 and now we're at roughly 291000 So a um, little bit of a decrease there, and there has been a 4.8% decrease as well in the sales price versus list price. Uh, so they're having to come down a little bit as 
well. Average days on market gone up 50% was 30 days on market uh, in 2022 that last quarter and our first quarter so far this year we're at 45 average days on market. So let's take a look really quick at Pike and Meriwether. Pike uh, is doing pretty much the same as everybody else at this point. Their listing numbers are down. Their sold uh, numbers are down as far as how many are active and sold on the market. Uh, we do see a 10% increase in list price and a 20 per six, uh, 26 I'm sorry, percent increase in average sales price. So last quarter of the year in Pike, we were seeing 309,000 average sold price and uh, now we're at 390 so that's a good little increase and um, the average list price 454,000 uh, and uh, in the last quarter there and then first quarter it is now 503,000 roughly and uh, average days on market though has gone up 63% so uh, 41 in that last quarter and 67 now uh, in January till uh, this day in March of 2023 so um, average days on market guys is a very very popular trend I'm seeing everywhere here and uh, list prices being higher but not quite getting um, as much for the house as we would anticipate and seeing that uh, ratio for the sales price to list price uh, being brought down a little bit as well. Taking a look at Meriwether. Um, Meriwether is up in properties listed, just like Carroll County a little bit, but um, the number of solds have gone down 26.8%. Uh, their average list price, 283000 now 297000 in that last quarter. So we're down on that a little bit. We're also down, um, actually, we're, we're pretty much breaking even at the average sold price, 265000 for both uh, periods that we're looking at. So um, 70 7.7% increase on days on market. So um, that's good. And there's actually a 2.4% increase in the sales price versus list price, meaning that um, there is a little bit of bidding maybe still going on in Meriwether County. So um, very, very interesting there. I think that we've covered everybody, but let me just double check. I don't think we hit Spalding or Troop. Uh, Spalding County down 8% in the number of listed properties. Um, there was 307 last quarter, 280 this quarter. Um, and the number of properties sold is actually down 30%. So um, the houses really sitting there, days on market um, up 51.6%. So we're seeing an average of 47 days on the market in Griffin now versus 31 in that last quarter of the year. Average sales price um, up a little bit uh, to 200 versus 274000 and uh, but the average sold price is down um, 2% from 261 to 256000 So um, very similar trends there as well. And then um, taking a look at Troop County, um, they are also up a little bit in number of properties listed. So Meriwether, Carroll, and uh, Troop Counties are all hanging out with their uh, percentage increase. And uh, But again, like all of our other uh, counties that we're looking at right now, the number of properties sold is down 6%. I do anticipate that uh, the number of properties sold and listed is going to continue to increase for these counties over the next six months. So the next time we look at this six-month comparison chart, there should be a little bit more um, linear growth, I would say, for these types. But um, we're going to keep looking at them. Average days on market is also up 54.5% in uh, Troop County, 34 days average on market. But in retrospect, that is lower um, days on market than a lot of our other counties. Um, so Troop County is seems to be a little bit of a popping area as far as people um, scooping up those houses there as well in Coweta. So um, very interesting to look at all of that. I think that there's a lot to break down overall about these counties and about what's going on with the market and some of the things that we've been hearing about on TV. So let's just take a quick little break uh, and go to a commercial and we will come back to uh, discuss uh, the country and kind of what's going on with that market and how we can anticipate what to do next as a buyer, as a seller, and uh, take a little look. It is WQEE 99.1 FM. 
This week's Property of the Week is located at 688 Cheatham Road in Griffin, Georgia. This 32.14 acre track is waiting to find its new owner. This property features a three bed, two bath home built in 1890. An 18 by 28 utility shed ran with its own power and water, fencing for horses and other livestock, and timber such as pine, oak, and pecan trees. Call 678-634-9770 for more information. Welcome back. It's the At Home with Allison show. This is Allison Waters, local realtor, and uh, we're about to dive into the market a little bit more. I talked about different counties uh, in my general surrounding area and the counties that I do also service as a realtor, um, but I want to look at state of Georgia overall. I want to look at the nation overall and kind of give you guys a little bit of idea. Now, I do want to say that uh, it's interesting how how the internet works, how you can go some places and you can find this information, but then you go somewhere else and you find conflicting information and you can never really figure out ultimately what's the truth. Um, I did go to multiple different sites, but a lot of the data that I've used for um, the show so far and what I will be using is from the Georgia Listing Service or the National Association of Realtors. So a lot of this data is generalized um, and should be generally accurate as well based on data. So it's it's hard to anticipate the market. It's hard to anticipate what's coming next and uh, make predictions because there's just so many, so many um, things that contribute to the market and everyone's situation is different as well. So let's just look at, uh, you know, the Georgia overall stats because it's very, very interesting. Um, so the last 12 months versus the 12 months before that, right? Um, very similar to our counties that we're looking at new listings are down, pending sales are down, meaning under contract, um, uh, houses based on active ones that have been put on the market and then closed units is down. So we're not listing as much. We're not seeing as many sales and things, um, are closing or closing in. I don't know why I was about to say that. That doesn't make any sense, but they're, 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 they're slowly declining. Um, but we have seen an increase in average sales price, which is so interesting because we see that there's not as much inventory on the market and things aren't closing as much, but for some reason we're still raising those sales prices. And a huge part of that is that there are sellers that um, I'm not. I'm not going to say sellers because it's agents too. Agents, sellers, homeowners. You feel like your home is valuable, and you're like, if I'm going to let it go, if I'm going to give it to someone, I want to get as much as I can for it because this is what I think it's worth. And what's really awesome about that is that sometimes that works. Sometimes that you have made your home so unique and so incredible that the market will come through and give you exactly what you want for it because that's the market ultimately decides the value. The buyers decide the value. Um, but there is some unrealistic expectation that because of the home values that we've seen over the last two years that we are still going to be able to sell them at that. So what we can see by seeing the average sales price go up, but new pending sales and new closed units going down, that's telling us that these inflated uh, sales prices aren't going to be working for very much longer and that they are going to decline. Um, we are seeing a increase in um, average days on market that we talked about as well because People are not shopping them as frequently. And uh, inventory is kind of... Uh, maybe not to the market's desire. Uh, if you do have a really unique house and there's something, uh, you know, in a, in a hot price point, maybe between that 250 to 350,000, you're probably still going to see multiple offers. You might get your, um, you know, home value increased a little bit by doing that. But for the most part, everything's kind of leveling out. It's, it's balancing out. Um, but is it really crashing? So let's look at some data about the um, GDP. So gross domestic product. How are Americans spending money? And I think that that's really important uh, because the last few years, you would think, right, that uh, people spending money would have gone down because of COVID. But what's really, really crazy, so let's look at 2019. The uh, people spending money was up at the 2.3% average GDP. It went down th to negative 3.4% in 2020, but 
it went up to 5.7% in 2021. So it spiked drastically, more than double what it was as far as people spending money pre-COVID. So, and then now we're in 2022, it's gone down a little bit from that 5.7 to that 2.1, uh, which I think is is interesting as well. Um, it was negative uh, 3.8-ish uh, post 20, 2008, 2009 area. Um, so it, it's interesting to see how we spent so much money, but as a, uh, what's it, what am I trying to say? In On the contrary, savings and personal savings went down drastically. I'm serious. Like in 2020, people had 16% savings. Now it's down to 3.3%. So there are not as many savings that people have in their account anymore. Our bank accounts are less. We have less money in savings because we've been spending it all. And now people are going to be a little more tight. It's crazy. 2020 was a pandemic. It showed that, you know, hey, um, th- things can change in, in the blink of an eye, something catastrophic could happen and I need money, but our reaction, uh, <laughs> as humans, just being the way that we are, it's like, oh, something terrible happens. That didn't teach us anything. We should just keep spending. But really what it was is that e-commerce became such a big thing and people were at home and a lot of the, uh, you know, e-commerce went up like almost 40% or more during that period. So we were just spending a lot more money. And then when we got back out and we were able to roam the streets again, we're like, we're going to go freaking spend money at every restaurant and do every cool and fun thing because we've been cooped up. So um, how that's going to affect our our market is interesting in a lot of ways. Student loan debt also went up drastically over the last few years at $3 billion a year um, versus before it was in the low... Um, two billion um area I believe a year um I actually need to double check that really quick because that does not sound right so we will come back to that in just a minute when I pull it up but um overall we're in more debt we're we spent more money we have less savings less first-time home buyers are looking. So 37% is the usual average on how, um, 37 to 40%, how many first-time home buyers are in our market. Um, now it's down uh, pretty, pretty significantly to about 20%. Um, so far this year, buyers, first-time home buyers purchasing properties. So that's showing us that there's less money wanting to be spent. Um, there's less savings, so less affordability on uh, being able to buy because home values are up significantly. So there's really a lot to unpack there. And I think a huge thing too that's contributing right now to the increase in rates um, is because inflation is still up. And the Fed is going to continue to raise those rates, which mortgage mortgage lenders um, and banks will uh, follow as far as the trend goes. But um, even in retrospect, if we continue to raise interest rates, we're still um, pretty average right now. Being in the sixes, 7.81 is the historical average of all time, uh, which the twos and the threes over the last two year uh, two years really brought us down significantly because it was a lot higher than 7.81% for interest rates. But um, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be contributed uh, to the the coming years, uh, whether we continue to increase those rates to match uh, the inflation or if they come down, um, if inflation comes down, will interest rates come down, back down to match it? Yes, they will. But will they ever become like we saw before in threes and fours? It could be uh, very unlikely and probably something we will never see in our in our uh a lifetime. So uh, there's a lot there as far as the interest rate goes, but I think as as far as being ready to buy, is this something you do right now? Um, do we wait for interest rates to come down? Do we wait for home values to come down? Do we, uh, w- what do we do? And so 
another reason right now that inflation is up and we're fighting this is because of economic things that are going on inside our country, but also outside of our country. Um, there's a lot of things going on internationally right now that, uh, as far as Ukraine goes, tensions with China and other things, that if those things continue to increase, it's also going to affect our market and it may continue to um, cause the rate of inflation and um, people spending money and prices being driven down. Uh, so we have to really be aware about what's going on in the market and how we're going to contribute um, to ourselves to make sure that we're in a position at any time uh, to move if we need to move. And I think that that comes down to keeping savings and learning how to save again and um, moving when you move, but most importantly, choosing a price range that's affordable for you now. Um, I If you have to move right now, I would not suggest that you go buy something at the top of your price range or that's going to be pushing uh, monthly for you as far as what you can afford versus what you're bringing in and just really try and make things as easy as you can. But, um, you know, with tensions economically, that's going to affect us too. It's not just post-COVID. Um, of course, a lot of it is, but um, it's not going to be like 2008. There are no true predictions for a housing market crash. There's just not. Even with a couple big banks closing down recently, they're still not anticipating that to be a chain reaction. And um, we very, may, very well may continue to see housing prices increase. We may continue um, to see a uh, an inventory problem. If the interest rates come down a little bit again and these home values continue to come down a little bit, what's just going to happen is everyone's going to rush out and start buying again and then inventory is still going to be low and it's just going to increase the, the home values again. So I think really where we're at now, um, and this is just based on what I'm seeing, of course there's no real way to predict, but I think that this little cycle is kind of going to continue and I think that we may continue to see home, home values um, you know, increase in the coming years, there may just be a tiny little window that people are going to have when the housing prices are going to drop and the interest rates are as well. I think it's going to be a really long time until we see a true balance there. So um, it, it's interesting. It, it's really interesting and something that we all should be uh, paying attention to for sure. So, um, you know, everyone uh, is different. And everyone's situation is different. We can very well still use this time period for sellers to be a great time to pull equity. This is still a great time for a buyer to buy um, because it seems to be a trend that every buyer's like, I wish I would have bought last year, or I wish I would have bought, bought then, or I wish I would have bought then, or I'll wait to buy then. And I think that a lot of that is... Um, you know, some of it is strategic, but I think that there are plenty of ways that you can utilize now because there's no true way to anticipate what's coming. And you have to look at your situation um, and your finances and do what's best for you. Uh, but there are going to be an influx, as we're seeing now, of USDA and FHA loans, not even for first time home buyers, but just for people that are going to have to sell and rebuy again, um, just because that's, that's all that they're going to be able to afford as far as down payment because they haven't been saving money and there's just been a lot of uh, miscommunication there I think as far as what's really going on in the market and what we can really anticipate seeing but we've got to learn how to put more money back in our pocket and find a way to survive all of this so um let's talk about some tips. Like if you need to buy right now, or if you need to sell right now, um, what are some things that you should be doing? If you are buying, like I mentioned, start with a budget and stick to it. Um, don't go higher than you're able to afford. Don't do something that's going to put you in a tight financial position. But at the same time, um, if housing prices are going to be coming down, maybe for the rest of this year only, and then we're going to see a spike in them again, uh, you might as well do it now. And if rates do go down in the future, you may be in a position to refinance and get that lowered. Um, so definitely stay within budget if you have to move, um, you know, 
there's a kind of a mismatch between what buyers are wanting to do and what sellers are wanting to do right now in the market. Buyers want to lowball and get a good deal and sellers want, you know, prices from the last two years. So um, as a buyer, you want to have a, a strong mind as far as going into it with having a solid realtor, um, but also being prepared that, you know, sellers may be still a little, a little pushy as far as what they're wanting, but there is leverage and there's lots of ways to um, get more for the buyer in this market now. Um, so while there is more breathing room, it is still a seller's market. It still is, um, but we're going to work on my end to get you as, as good of a deal as we can and uh, use whatever we can as leverage. If you're looking to sell um, definitely agent is huge, huge thing. You've got to have an agent that really, really knows what they're doing. Um, be realistic about selling. It would be better if you're a seller to sell for a fair market price, than try to inflate it and, uh, have it sitting for a long periods of time and making other people think, um, you know, yeah, it's just overpriced. So we're not even going to waste our time getting there price to sell. That is probably my biggest advice for sellers at this point is just price to sell and uh, be be prepared for uh, buyers to want something <laughs> because uh, it, it's, it's just happening in this market. Your house is going to be sitting longer and the buyers are going to know that and they're going to want to want to do something about it and try and bargain and uh, you can't blame them for it. I think affordability is our biggest problem right now, and that is um, because of the post-COVID non-saving, spending too much, um, but also because home values inflated, and they inflated a lot, and interest rates, where they're at now, um, although they are still very historically low in comparison for the last few years, it's something that makes people just really weary uh, because they want to see it happen again. And unfortunately, it's probably not going to. So the best way is to just look at your situation, know what and, and know and anticipate when you need to move um, if you can and be making steps early on on how to protect yourself through that process without putting yourself in a uh, position that you're going to regret because some people, a lot of people do have regrets about home buying. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm informing you enough if you are my client to look at all of your options and uh, know that there is still um there's still some uncertainty with what's going on in the market right now. And we're not, I'm not going to lie about that. But at the same time, I see the opportunity in both scenarios. Um, and I don't think that we can live our lives right now based off what we anticipate to happen or what we think is going to happen in the future. Um, so with that in mind, guys, you know, just continue. I'm going to continue providing data for you. I'm going to continue to uh, bring as much knowledge as this to I can and um, to this as I can and hopefully uh, bring some more people on that are really knowledgeable about this as well. I mean, economists study this stuff um, for a career to truly understand the market and truly understand what's happening. So all of us just have to continue and myself as a real estate professional to gain as much insight um, into the market as often as possible because it's constantly changing and things can uh, fluctuate very quickly up and down and um, you know there may be a chance where rates drop um, for a day or two or a week and you can jump in and get locked in at a low rate and I will let you know about that if um, you know interest rates just took a big spike then you know we may want to anticipate putting it off for a few weeks and see if anything happens but then again there's always the option that they could continue to go up and then you'll just be waiting and waiting <laughs> so definitely look at your options uh, be aware and hopefully looking at um, and hearing all of this data and everything didn't overwhelm you, but uh, the market expert here, at least that's what I'm trying to be. So if you have any questions about real estate, give me a call, 678-634-9770, and uh, follow me on the socials at A Waters Realtor, W-A-T-E-R-S. You can find me pretty much on anything, and I plan to continue this. 
this show for as long as I can. Um, have so many awesome people lined up to come on this show. I mean, seriously, uh, the next five or six are going to be really awesome. So thank you so much for the support for those of you that do and for bearing with me as I try and figure out um, really how to make this show as best as possible. I look forward to seeing y'all next week. Happy Market Monday, and I will see you uh, next Monday, 10 a.m. WQEE 99.1 FM. Thank you for listening to At Home with Allison, your local expert on real estate, business, and community.